Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to yet another video of single shot video series. In this series, we are trying to cover simpler topics, smaller topics which can be done in 20 to 30 minutes so that it requires less number of time for you to revise the topic in a single shot. So today's video is on natural product. We have already covered topics like nuclear chemistry, polymer chemistry, solid state, electrochemistry and surface chemistry. So you can check out those videos as well. The link is there in the description of this video. I would like to thank Karthik for providing all the slides, making these slides so interactive. Thank you so much Karthik, a big shout out to you. Now in this video, today we are going to talk about natural products and the important topics, important things from natural product which actually you need to remember. So now without wasting any time, let's continue with our video. Alright, so let's talk about terpenoids. So terpene was employed to describe mixture of isomeric polyhydrocarbons of the molecular formula C10S16 occurring in the uh, turpentine and many essential oil which were obtained from the sap and tissues of certain plants and trees. The oxygenated derivation like uh, alcohols, aldehydes and ketone etc. at that time they were called as camphors. So basically terpenoids are polyhydrocarbons with few exceptions. There are few exceptions in them. And they have molecular formula of C5H10 hold N. Okay, so then the value of N is going to decide different classes of their division. So if the value of N is 2, they are called as monoterpenoids, and the formula becomes if you put 2 here and multiply, it will become C10H16. If the value of N is 3, then they are called as CSQ terpenoids. And if you put 3 here, multiply, you will get C15H24. And similarly, for 4, they are called as diterpenoids. For 5, they are called as sester terpenoids. For 6, they are called as triterpenoids. For 8, they are called as teraterpenoids or also called as carotenoids. And if the value of n is greater than 8, in that case, they are called as polyterpenoids. So, this is the general naming or general nomenclature of terpenoids. Let's talk about some chemical properties of terpenoids. So, they are basically unsaturated compounds generally open chain or cycle with one or more carbon atom rings and having one or more double bonds. Consequently, terpenoids undergo addition reaction because they have double bonds. Uh, they go on uh, addition reaction with hydrogen, with halogens, uh, with uh, halogen acids, etc. Some of them also form hydrates. They also form characteristic addition product with NO2, NOCl, NOBr, etc. These addition products are found to be useful in the identification of terpenoids. And there are number of addition product, they are antiseptic also in properties. Second chemical property is that they undergo polymerization also called as dehydrogenation of the ring. They also have olefinic bonds, so that's why they are very easily oxidized nearly by the entire oxidizing agent. So they can be easily oxidized. The third thing is that uh, the number of terpenoids are labile and hence readily isomerized in the presence of uh, and into more stable forms. Okay, so they are very easily undergo isomerization. And on the thermal decomposition, most of the terpenoids yield isoprene as one of the product. What is isoprene rule? So there is a rule called as isoprene rule. So it says that the skeletal structure of all naturally occurring terpenoids are built up of isoprene units. Now this rule suggests that uh, all the naturally occurring terpenoids, they have certain number of isoprene units into them and uh, that can be calculated from this. So the isoprene rule has been deducted in the following fact. First is that the empirical formula of most of the naturally occurring terpenoids is C5H8 whole to the power n and that will give you n number of C5H8 which is the general formula of isoprene. Now uh, the thermal decomposition of almost all the terpenoids give isoprene as one of the product and for example if you see rubber on destructive distillation field isoprene is one of the decomposition products. Uh, similarly, isoprene when heated at 280 degrees Celsius get dimerizes to yield a widely distributed terpenoid called dipentene. So this is what it is. Isoprene may also be polymerized to yield rubber like product. So that these all are different evidences which suggest that isoprene rule is followed and all the terpenoids after undergoing proper thermal decomposition the final product or the stable product which they form is a isoprene unit. Now there are some general methods for determination of structure of terpenoids. Now they are like uh, analytical method, synthetical method, physical method and knowledge of the molecular arrangement method. 
let's talk about synthetical method so uh, some general synthetical reaction are found to be great value for finding out the structure of terpenoids for example first is catalytical hydrogenation so when aromatic compounds are hydrogenated catalytically under suitable condition it is possible to obtain synthetic terpenoids for example terpenoid alcohol menthol may be prepared from thymol an aromatic compound by catalytic hydrogenation so you can see this is a thymol which on undergoing hydrogenation in the presence of nickel as a catalyst forms menthol as a terpenoid other is your grignard reaction so this reaction is very important you because you have seen grignard reaction being used in so many organic reactions now this reaction was successfully employed by perkins and uh, to synthesize a large number of compound which they are related as terpenoids so by grignard reagent methyl or isopropyl groups can be introduced into the compound having carbonyl compound so if you have carbonyl group uh, you can introduce methyl group into it and on hydro hydrolysis it can give you a compound having both uh, like hydroxyl group as well as methyl group both by direct application of grignard reaction alpha terpenol uh, which is a naturally occurring terpenoid uh, tertiary alcohol can be readily prepared uh, some other things which you need to remember are like limonene okay limonene is one of the most important monoterpenoid and how that can be formed is through alpha terpenol so if you react it with khso4 and that's a removal of water molecule so dehydration uh, reaction it is and it is going to give you a limonene similarly limonene can undergo hydrogenation to form a, a di like the the reduction of both these uh, olefinic group are going to happen in this in the presence of nickel as a catalyst similarly if you react it with bromine so addition of bromine will take place on both these alkene groups uh, your limonene can also undergo reaction with hcl to give you addition product also you can form alpha terpenol from limonene if you do follow this particular reaction mechanism there is a relationship between general molecular formula of compound and the type of compound so for example limonene which is having molecular formula of c10h12 it absorbs two mole of hydrogen to give tetrahydrolimonene okay which has a formula of c10h20 corresponding to the general formula of cnh2 now it means limonene has monocyclic structure similarly general formula of the parent saturated uh, hydrocarbon can help you to understand that what type of structure it is going to have if the formula is of order cnh2 n plus 2 in that case this is going to have a acyclic structure if it is CnH2n type then it is a monocyclic structure if you have CnH2n plus 2 then it is a bicyclic structure and so on all right let's talk about alkaloids now so these are some basic nitrogenous compound of vegetables uh, usually having a marked physiological action and which may be regarded divided from pyrrole uh, pyridine quinoline uh, isoquinoline or similar cyclic nitrogenous molecule many of them possess curative properties and are of great value in the medicine so alkaloids are a very well known naturally occurring or natural products right some general properties are like the state so most of the alkaloids are crystalline solid which cannot be distilled only a few of them are liquid and can be volatile without decomposition for example uh, conine and nicotine uh, physiological actions uh, the most of them are bitter in taste and often exert a marked physiological action solubility so almost all of them are either insoluble or sparingly soluble in water liquid alkaloids conine and nicotine are notable exceptions they are readily soluble in water and appreciably volatile in steam alkaloids are generally less soluble in chloroform ether and benzene but are readily soluble in alcohols so the optical activity of alkaloid so most of them are optically active and usually levorotatory they are generally basic in nature in the number of cases their solutions give a strong alkaline reaction all of them form salt with acids among these salts are chloride sulfates and oxalates oxalates and uh, these chloride gives double salt and chlorides of gold uh, with chlorides of gold platinum and mercury precipitation so alkaloids are precipitated from their aqueous or acid solution by a number of substances such as picric acid tannic acid per chloric acid potassium mercuric iodide etc some important example are nicotine and cocaine etc so nicotine has a molecular formula this cocaine looks something like this 
morphine is another terpenoids which looks like this so you should know the structures of some basic uh, alkaloids right uh, picolinic acid or pyridine 2 carboxylic acid looks something like this nicotinic acid is pyridine 3 carboxylic acid isonicotinic acid is pyridine 4 carboxylic acid so you can see just by the substitution of this carboxylic acid group on the pyridine ring you have different types of alkaloid form uh, nicotinamide is uh, where your carboxylic acid is converted into in the nicotinic acid if you convert this oh group to nh2 it becomes nicotinamide terpenols so if in a terpene you have alcohol group or hydroxyl group they are called as terpenols there are different types of terpenols like alpha terpenol beta terpenol gamma terpenol and then we have uh, four are terpenol right so you can look upon the structures of them uh, the two thing which you have to remember is the relative position of this uh, carbon carbon double bond and the hydroxyl group camphor is one more important natural product and it looks something like this you should know and you should remember the structure of them please make a note of them if you have if you are making short notes please make uh, their molecular structures and write down their name you should remember the structures of some of them right Caffeine is very well known natural product and the molecular structure looks something like this. Quinoline derivatives. So, quinoline looks something like this. We all have this, we all know the structure of quinoline. The numbering on the ring is done something like this. We start it from 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Isoquinoline has the structure like this. This is also called as 2 quinoline. Now, quinoline can be converted into quinolinic acid by reaction with KMnO4 and heating it up and that can be rather converted into nicotinic acid by removal of carbon dioxide from the reaction. So, uh, you have to look upon that how you are carrying out these reactions. Some more important molecules which are actually important from their NMR studies, uh, the NMR structures and all are generally asked, uh, they are like alpha pinene, beta pinene, aspirin, ibuprofen. So, these are some of the molecules which were important from your uh, natural product perspective. Especially, we have focused on alkaloids and terpenes. So, that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching and that's all from my side for this particular video. I will see you guys in the next one. Till then, have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.